So, what I want is to is to be consciously what I am. Because I already am what I am, I understand. But it seems that I don't feel what I am. If I am bliss, I don't feel bliss. So what I do in order to wake up from the dream is is something but I have some doubts sometimes on what on if what I'm doing um maybe I could be do I I could be doing more. When I first heard the, the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, it was one year ago, I, I, I sort of, sometimes I would do like this with my, my hand, but it's not necessary, but it helps a bit to, like, to concentrate my being on, on being very present and very alert and I would feel a great power, a kind of an energy in my body, a subtle energy and I would stay kind of rooted in my center, being whatever and I would say, okay, if I could just stay like that and also I would kind of watch the thoughts and the sensations and if I get drawn by it, hooked by it, then I would come back to that feeling that it's very powerful and like this. And I would say, okay, if I stay like this, I eventually I would become enlightened. And that that was my understanding and that's what I've been doing for a long time. And then a few days ago I felt I was doing that, and then I felt that my, the mind, so what I believe to be, everything that I can, have an effect on, I would let it melt. Oh, it just happened, kind of. Everything that was me, but not me, but everything that I had power on, I would relax into nothingness, and I would kind of... My understanding was that I would melt my mind, and that the true being of what I am would arise. I would, it would just come up by itself the only thing that I could do is that is let everything that I am not relax and then I had a doubt on what was better that kind of relaxing or that being very powerfully into the present moment like very rooted like that very very powerful energy or very subtle surrendering into the now and letting everything that I am not that I have with letting everything that I am not melt away and let what I am arise by itself. The less uh identifying yourself with the thoughts as the thinker or the one or the mind then the more 
enlightened you are. You can I, have... I don't hear you very well, I'm sorry. Hmm. The less identified with my thought I am, the more enlightened I am. Yes. Because enlightened means the mind is illuminated with the light which is you you are the source of light not as a separate individual entity so the less there's identification with thoughts believing the thoughts to be real then the natural state of being reveals itself so the mind it's in reverse it cannot become enlightened it it has to the false identification has to melt away and by seeing that the thoughts are not real and that the thoughts are not you the mind stop getting attaching to the thoughts and withdraw into the beingness which is you so it's a process of withdrawing and not gaining gaining is always going out gaining an object gaining energy gaining power gaining bliss withdrawing means is in reverse you're not gonna gain enlightenment you're not gonna gain power you're gonna lose all the idea that you have and when there is no thoughts you remain when thoughts would rise I would say I say that is not the reality I am what is when those thoughts are not. When those thoughts arise, I am caught up in a dream and I don't see it. But I'm already caught up in the dream when I suddenly I see it. I say, oh, that's how the dream is being created. And I would say, I am not that, that is not real, that is a dream. And sometimes I would just come back, sometimes I would say, I am changing this awareness, I am, I am that. That's good. That's good. This is discrimination. You discriminate the mind. Discrimination happens mentally and also it happens by seeing that the thoughts are not real without mental voice and then when you shift the attention I am changeless awareness which is just another thought at least it points the direction prior to this idea even and the most powerful tool for the mind is where the attention is See what the is the attention where the attention is is the attention on the thoughts and then the mind gets attached to the to the thoughts and get lost in a dream or the attention on either the sense felt experience of who you are and if there is not this direct experience then the at least the sense of the body like the sensation in the body which is just a bridge to you like if right now you don't move and you don't move your eyes and you just shift the attention and feel the sensation in the body and any physical experience is a sensation in the background there is an awareness that is absolutely still this awareness is you the more the attention is on that then it opens 
it is like a doorway to the true being of who you are. So, I, I believe because I don't know because I have doubt. So I believe that I know what you are talking about. I believe that I am familiar with the undescribable feeling of being. But I have a doubt. This is what the, the, the wise call the second veiling. The first veiling is that the mind says it hears the knowledge that who you are is changeless awareness without name, without form, boundless, ever free. When the first veiling is playing then the mind says no it is not, it cannot be and it turns its attention away and stay ignorantly with its own ideas and beliefs. When the second, when the first veiling is removed, the mind hears the knowledge and it says, yes, I know that, I believe that, yet when I go deep inside, that changeless awareness doesn't shine through. It just because the mind doesn't go deep enough, if it keeps fixing the attention inward, then the second veil is removed that it doesn't shine through and then the changeless awareness, which is boundless, shines through. By itself, not because you did something. You just have to put the attention more in. Then it happens. You cannot realize the self by practice yet when you direct the mind inward then the mind is closer to the source of light and when the clouds are removed the light reveals itself into itself by itself therefore one thing the mind has to trust is that when there is a direct experience of who you are, who you are recognizes itself by itself without a thought. Another example is consciousness is conscious of itself by itself without the mind saying, hmm, ha, ah, I understand, this is me. Ah, I understand, this is consciousness. These are just thoughts appearing in the field of consciousness. means is just trust is the willingness to try until it is directly experienced because the direct experience is ultimate Doubts are normal for the mind to surface and the doubts have to be removed because if you don't doubt the doubt itself it would lead the mind into error means again identifying with the thoughts believing the thoughts to be real that's the error that's what's called false identification Don't look with the mind to experience the self. With the mind, undo itself. 
examine the thoughts, discriminate as you mentioned, catch when the mind is dreaming, recognizing, label it even, ah, the, the mind is dreaming, it's not real, I'm not even dreaming it, I'm not the dreamer, then if I'm not this, then you can question, who am I? Who is the real I? And when you put this question, don't give an answer. Question where the I thought arises from. Because that's the starting point. This is the link between pure being, the self, changeless awareness, and the body. The I thought is the link. Question that I. What are you sensing right now? Not thinking. What is the sense felt experience? There is subtle sensations in the body. Of anyway, subtle sensations in the body, in the stomach, and more importantly, there is a feeling that I am not thinking. There is a feeling of stillness, of silence. Fix the attention on that. And the more I put my attention into it, the more the sensation in the body I get stronger. It's a very subtle sensation, kind of a vibration something, something like that. But I keep the attention on, on nothingness. That's good. Fix the attention on that, then what might happen is the habits will spring forth. That's what the sages call vasanas. They come up into the surface because there's no resistance. It's like there is a pot and now the, the lid is open. So everything that was stored that you don't even know or remember can come into the surface. Now, out of habit, the mind will get attached to the thoughts and get lost in a dream, catch it, shift the attention back or discriminate first, and then fix the attention back on the stillness. Okay, can I say something about that? I have two different experiences of that. I have one experience that I had a lot these past days was I would fix the attention on stillness and then I think that it is a thought that triggered it. It's a sensation in the body, very nasty sensation of anger. It's also mixed with almost sexual pull, but the very angry sexual things also mixed with anger and I feel it in the body and it's very nasty. And what I used to do was fix the attention on it. And then I heard a video of you and you said, don't fix the attention on it so much, just remain with the stillness. And then I did that and I remained with the stillness and yes, it goes away. That's okay because this 
anger or rage or violence it doesn't matter what what uh, labeling the mind gives it's all the misidentification these are the vasanas coming to the surface so enough that you notice it because obviously it captured the mind's attention and then recognize it and shift the attention it's enough then it melts what happens if you put the attention on it the mind labels it and then it labels it negative and the moment it labels it negative there is unpleasant sensation and then it doesn't want to it want this sensation it reacts to it and then the mind is just reacting so you're not even present with the sensation that way when you shift the attention back to stillness it's like this is what fire of knowledge removes the darkness of ignorance because that fire of knowledge is stillness it does it by itself so you don't need to be concerned as long as you can shift the attention and fix the attention on the stillness it is normal that normal for all these latencies to come up into the surface to free themselves this anger just came into the surface to free itself if you don't react to it you don't feed the energy it just dissipates if not it is unconsciously runs your mind because it is in the storage it was there before it wasn't wasn't created yes suddenly it's what the mind can get confused mm, because of the stillness there is this rage no there is this rage already inside and the stillness allows it to surface to free itself because when the anger arose in the past and I was labeling it with the mind and I was playing a game with it with the mind, I didn't allow it to, to go through me. That's right. This is how what's called you resisted it in, in, in a form of either talking to it or even denying it or even mentally discriminating it it's a form of resistance sometimes and when you fix the attention on the stillness there's no resistance then by itself it free itself because it's just a trapped energy it doesn't need your help it just that the mind has to be out of the way for it to release itself. Is it normal that when I fix my attention on stillness, I don't, I do not feel bliss. I feel peace somewhat, but I do not feel love. Don't expect for any particular experience that you imagine in the mind. Because then you start to compare it and it will throw you back into the ideas and the belief you have what bliss is. Keep fixing the attention on the stillness. Discriminate when the thoughts when they appear so you don't let the mind get attached to thoughts and get lost in a dream. And then all the rest happens and opens infinitely. Don't be concerned. Because it's just the trick of the mind wanting to gain bliss. Means it is treating the awareness as a pleasant sensation in the body like any other object. Mm
because some people report different experiences of blissful or ecstasies that are impermanent temporarily then this is not the real self if it has a beginning and it has an end and it undergoes change no matter what ecstatic state it is it's not it just um, what the wise call inferior bliss and it's a trick for the mind to get attached and claim now I've experienced the bliss of the self yet when the mind is out of the way the self remains let it open enough it has no end there was nobody that reported an end with the self because it is beginningless endless the end is only of the idea or the belief or the thoughts themselves otherwise is the arrogance of the mind comes back in the back door it says hmm I'm enlightened hmm I've experienced the bliss and then now it says I am that bliss like it says I am this body no difference it objectifies awareness because the mind doesn't know awareness awareness knows itself by fixing the attention on stillness and remaining in stillness and coming back to it after discriminating and so on does that it dissolves the mind once you fix the attention on the stillness then you don't fixing the attention on thoughts therefore oh. you don't get attached to them therefore you don't perpetuate anything yeah. then all the habit that was already is stored that was given so much energy now is ready to come into the surface to clear itself this is the work the vasanas have to be burnt if you don't create new beliefs and ideas and and you don't get attached to thoughts and anything you fix the attention on grows and anything you withdraw the attention from it doesn't get energy it basically is not fed Is it also when I start telling a story in my head and I am in the story? Is that a vasana also? Yes. yes. Because a vasana, just a simple way to understand, is a habit. And the, most, the strongest habit is to get attached to thoughts and believe the thoughts to be the truth. This is the habit. So the mind, when the mind tells itself a story, that's already its habit. Yet the habit is not you. You are attributeless. You have no habits. You are pure, aware, changeless awareness. Is it necessary to know why from changeless awareness, which is all that is, the mind uh, arose and Maya arose and Samsara was created? Is it necessary to understand why it happened? No. 
because even the understanding would not eliminate the habits so okay I would understand so I would understand a nice story yet the more I see that the thoughts are not real the mind stop getting attaching to them and you fix the attention on the stillness which is a sense felt experience is the sense of I amness which is changeless which is real it's it's not the mind imagining it and then all the rest happens and the, the work is is not reacting and shifting the attention means when a thought appears getting attached to the thought is a subtle reactivity so if you see it and you shift the attention or discriminate it and shift the attention that's good enough I read the autobiography of a yogi and um, I listened to another master who's teaching Kriya Yoga why do they say that Kriya Yoga is the most efficient and fastest way to self-realization? I don't know. One thing is you have to realize that the different paths are just rivers merging into the same ocean you're the ocean it's according to the, the the personality and according to the maturity of the mind the different path feeds different minds so what happens let's say the Kriya Yoga is the fastest yet if it doesn't fit a particular personality it would be very slow and not suitable for that mind and another path which would be self-inquiry which is direct path would be more sufficient than the Kriya Yoga I'm not familiar with the Kriya Yoga yet Yoga is working with the thoughts and merging the mind back into changeless awareness I suggest if you haven't expose the mind to the teachings of Ramana Maharshi Nazir Gadatta of the book I Am That Yes, I started the book I Am That um, I, I liked when he was talking about the sensation I Am and all that because I resonated with it but then I keep going back to it a bit but uh, I don't like reading that book that much but I do understand the inquir inquiry I do understand why is it very valuable to to see how the dream is created by being identified with the thoughts and saying I am not I am not what I think I am in that story I am Change this awareness. Then see what attracts your mind that would keep the mind be exposed to words that point the mind back to the starting point, which is you, prior to the thoughts themselves. That's why it doesn't matter. You don't like that book, this is also going to change maybe you would come back to it and you would read it for the first time again and it will be different read, read a little bit about Ramana Maharshi there's 
the teachings and see if that see what as long as it's in the same subject pointing you or pointing pointing the mind back to who you truly are I am reading the lamp of non-dual reality now knowledge of non-dual reality that's very good I read the first two chapters and then it says you really have to understand those two two chapters to continue so I started now the first chapter very good and I I think I understand it but sometimes it feels what I understand is that the He still doesn't say why oneness decided to forget itself. It didn't. It just appears like from the standpoint of I am a separate individual entity. For yes. Leave the why. The why, the why says this is an immature question. No whys. Why? Because that's how it is. Yeah? Just anyway, work with the illusion. Discriminate the thoughts. And if you can experience the beingness of who you are, just fix the attention on that. As much as possible, continuously. This is the most profound it's like it's for the dog the scent for the owner that he lost yeah if a dog lost his owner now the only try um, um, clue it has it's the scent now it follows the scent back it finds the owner that stillness is the clue shift or fix the attention to that and let the clue take the mind back to you. And have a firm conviction in the mind that who you are is changeless awareness so no matter what thoughts are come discriminate hey I'm not these thoughts eh, these thoughts are not real see it not as a parrot inner seeing see through this seeing this piercing it's more illumination yes what was very helpful was to um, compare with the dream that I have in night when I sleep yes this is very good the three states are very important the waking state the dreaming state and deep sleep state is to realize that in the deep sleep state when there's no thought there is no external or internal world and now you start to see that the dream and the waking state are they really different yes it's uh, the same yes yeah. one is long and one is short yeah. one is a, a full manifestation of the ego in the waking state and in the the dreaming state is a it's a half manifestation of the ego and also in the waking state there is gross body which is the body physical and in the dreaming state there is only subtle body yet if you really contemplate upon it you would realize that the identification in the waking state is only with the subtle body not with the gross body it means it's only with the thoughts about the image I have about myself as a physical form, as a separate entity. It's like you never really experience physical pain in a dream, 
that's that's because you don't have a gross body in the dream. You experience pain in the dream. Ye yes. If you run and you something hits you. But it's never as bad. The mind is just not as reactive in the dream to the waking. So in the waking it just keeps reacting and feeding the energy. In the dream it just wander and jumps so quickly because it's only on the subtle. In the waking state the senses because they're open the mind goes back to so it gets again and again the impression which sustains or creates the illusion of continuity so then the pain appears to be long or better or worse and in the dream it's faster everything yes so is that how i can recognize that in the dream it is subtle only and uh, in the waking state it's gross how can i recognize that think about it reflect upon it contemplate contemplate this will reveal from inside you all the knowledge all the wisdom is inside you not in the books not in someone else so the books and someone else just pointing for you to turn the attention in and contemplate about it and then it reveals there's also a small book of Shankacharya that it's the Viveka we might start also record like with the non-dual we started in English a little bit is to continue also there is a small book booklet it's called seer and the scene we might we put it maybe in Facebook uh, in Bal might put it so you would see it's very small booklet I have put the Viveka I think but it's quite big mm. It depends on the translation. So there is one translation that I've been guided to use that has the visions and the essence in the translation. So you would you can see we'll post it so you would see the Viveka and the seer in the scene. In the seer in the scene he breaks the mechanism in a very nice way and as you go in and you you think about it you see that that's exactly how it is so it has s short slokas they call it like mm, paragraphs that one link to the other and it takes the mind in so it builds concentration also the non-dual it builds concentration as you read because it has a continuity rather than a lot of the, the books there are questions and answer and yet because it's a quest is the person asking the the master is jumping on the subject in the non-dual the Viveka and the seer and the scene the one who wrote it was in the two position he was the questioner and he was the master who was answering. He was talking from the two point of view. Ignorance, clarity, beyond. Yes? Yeah. And that way he takes the mind back in a continuous way. And it builds concentration. And it plants the seeds for the mind to really see. Because this knowledge is inside you it's not stories it just it breaks mechanism and if it touches upon traditions just discriminate it recognize it that it was let's say 
1400 years ago or 1500 years ago it was written or spoken to the people in that time yet the principle remains the same okay. use the words as aids as a bridge as seeds not the real thing You sense the stillness now? Now yeah, you're moving your eyes, don't move to answer. Then you look in your mind for a moment. I do sense it. Yes. The more there's recognition of that, the easier it is to fix the attention on that. And it not always the mind can do that. Recognize that too. The mind cannot always do what? Fix the attention on the stillness. Because when there is something comes into the surface, it can veil the silence for temporarily. Just recognize this is also going to change. It's just passing away. It's just a wave. So don't panic. And don't, don't react to it. Just cultivate this witnessing the wave passing through it is much easier to do that when I'm not doing anything yes when I'm doing something with other people mostly it's like I stay on the surface because the mind is going out more is not rooted enough and out of habit or fear it doesn't want to withdraw the attention in because it has all kind of ideas if I would do that what would they think and if I would do it they might go and and I would just remain alone all kind of stories unconscious and the mind so the mind doesn't even shift the attention enough a habit you get together with somebody and you feel the the necessity to speak instead of just be quiet then you fill up the space with noise the, the more the truth which is you would pull like a magnet the mind the mind wouldn't care it would see that it just habits I have lost the ability to chit chat that's good. I have also lost the ability to answer a question. Like the person who would want me to answer the question, I feel like I really have to be very clear and sometimes it seems very weird to the other people. Um, sometimes I know what it means. And it makes me feel uncomfortable because I think that the other person will think less of you. Yeah, because what happens, you are uncomfortable because of the beliefs still you have around what others will think about you, which basically you're thinking these ideas. It's thinking for them what you believe, nothing to do with them. The others will think what they think anyhow because thoughts appear. So it's not your business what others will think about you. And what I am doesn't care anyway. 
it's not even aware of others it is only aware of itself that's why who cares is a very good question when you are in dialogue inside you and you would ask who cares who is that I am I this that cares and without this thought who am I and remain quiet Some months, your existence uh, was watching the good actor Gaston, so I learned of you. Some months before, I decided to come live in Israel to see my uh, grandfather's uh, association in Israel. Do you think maybe I is it a, is there a possibility that I can come to see you? Of course. Every day people come and sit here. So if you come I will also speak in English because mostly people speak in Hebrew. I will learn. Anyway I can speak Hebrew and English so you can come every day we we get together sometimes twice a day where do you live it's in the center near tel aviv like in a in it's a small town so it's easy to get here it's thank you very much you're most welcome you're welcome to come and be here every day and sit and and be more rooted in the beingness of who you are and clear the doubts Not really. The one who goes through the path of liberation, it's not really, it's not a, a mantra path. It's just a tool to quiet the mind a little bit. Mantra has many things. It, it can clear the mind. It can uh, work on healing. It can uh, ease some things. So it can be an aid. Mm, so, again, different tools 
are fine as long as you recognize what they are for and that's it so it can be an aid along the way for the mind that's all The more I, I recognize stillness and the less doubts I have, even when I um, wrote a message on Facebook to you in, in Bali, I had like a big doubt on should I be very present like, like this or more like Reflecting what I am not melt away like I felt, and the more the days passed, the more I recognized that in fact the better way is uh, well, it happened by itself. It, it just it's a, a bit of this and a bit of that. This is why you cannot know the path because it is the path for the mind is every moment thought appear thought disappears so when you project how you're supposed to be or how it's supposed to happen you limit you don't allow everything to happen everything happens by itself this is what the mind wants to control because it has an idea how it's supposed to be like what is the best way everything that I have control on is not me that's right Thank you very much. You're most welcome. All the very best. Yes, thank you.